Hello, I'm Robert Betridge and I work in rare books and music collections at the National Library of Scotland. However, today we're in the Physic Garden of the Royal College of Physicians of Edinburgh because we're here to talk about Sir Robert Sibbald, one of the founders of the institution, and his book Scotia Illustrata, which was printed in Edinburgh in 1684. Sibbald was born in Edinburgh in 1641, attended high school in Cooper in Edinburgh, and was a student at Edinburgh University from 1653 to 1659. Like many of his peers, he went to the Netherlands to further his education, studying medicine at Leiden from 1660 to 1661, qualifying as a doctor in June 1662 after completing his studies in Angers in France. His time spent pursuing his medical qualification allowed him to study anatomy, surgery, botany, chemistry and materia medica, the Latin term for the study of substances used for healing and what is now known as pharmacology. With so many medicines being derived from plants, botany was a natural subject for doctors to study. Following his return to Edinburgh, he began to develop his interest in natural history, geography and antiquarianism, studies that would lead to the production of Scotia Illustrata. Sybil saw geography and natural history as closely related subjects, the topography of a nation having an effect on the character of its people. Sibold, along with his colleague Sir Andrew Balfour, were responsible for founding two Edinburgh institutions that still flourish today. In 1667 they established the Botanic Garden on a site next to Holyrood House, where I'm standing just now, and began in 1679 to meet with other Edinburgh medical men and form what would become the Royal College of Physicians of Edinburgh in 1681. The following year proved to be an important one for Sibold. In September 1682 he was knighted and appointed as James VII's Physician and Geographer Royal for Scotland, an appointment reflecting the importance of geography in building the identity of a nation. It was as Geographer Royal that he began to work on what would become the Scotia Illustrata, an attempt to gather information on all aspects of Scotland and her people. Geography could be used to understand Scotland's past, present and future potential. Knowledge of her resources and infrastructure was important to economic and scientific advance and of potential benefit to the country. To gather information for his book, Sibold issued an advertisement in 1682 which posed a number of questions to those in the upper ranks of society. The advertisement states that the King has instructed Sibold to produce a natural history of Scotland and a geographical description. Questionnaires were a recognised way to gather information as it was not always possible to gather at first hand and Sibold himself was not personally active in the field. The list shows who Sibold saw as reliable and the whole process relies on being able to trust the veracity of his reporters. The queries are typical of their time and emphasise the contemporary social order. At around the same time Sibold produced a sheet of instructions on how to answer the questionnaire, trying to introduce a scientific and accurate element to the reporting. There is no complete list of respondents to his 1682 inquiries, but surviving manuscript material records about 65 local correspondents. A project much like Sibold's was successfully initiated over a hundred years later in the 1790s with the compilation of the Statistical Accounts of Scotland, which benefited from a more empirical and enlightenment approach. Sibold's work had placed greater emphasis on medicine and Scotland's flora and fauna. Sibold's influence rests then in his attention to what he called the knowledge of natural things that are the products of this country as useful to human life. I find it very interesting the reliance people placed on superstition importance at the time Sybil was writing. Uh, things that seem ridiculous to us um, were, well, they were quite important to people at that time. Uh, he writes about some sailors in the Pentland Firth throwing bales of straw into a, into a whirlpool to try and subdue the whirlpool so that they could sail on without any trouble. So that's the kind of thing that uh, you know, there's no scientific proof or anything like that, but it still makes it into his book at the time. Sybil wrote about the importance of using local plants to make medicines, and I think that's something we could learn from today. It'd be interesting to take a walk with him somewhere like this, or in a wood somewhere, and get him to point out the, the plants that he would like to use to make medicines with, and it'd be interesting to see how useful they'd be in the modern world. I'd be interested to know why he didn't want to travel more to do his own research. I think uh, obviously it was much more difficult to travel in those days and he would have uh, perhaps thought he could get better information from local people but 
I wonder if uh, his own curiosity would have driven him to, to explore these places that he puts in the book but never visited. Well, he had such a, a wide variety of interests, it's difficult to say. A, a practicing doctor would be the obvious one, but also he could have been a botanist or a, a geographer, carrying on the kind of work that he, he was working on when he wrote Scotia Illustrata.